Welcome to Now in Android number 29. First up, Mad Skills. So the series continues to roll along and we've introduced a new topic. We've been covering app bundles for the last couple of weeks and we just today posted the final episode uh, with the technical content, but we're not done with the series overall and I'll get back to that. So Wojtek uh, Kaliczynski and Ben Weiss have been posting articles all about app bundles and related content. Episode one, everything you wanted to know about play app signing. So app bundles is about uploading something that is not an APK, which then needs to be actually created uh, into APKs to download onto user devices. So part of that means signing those APKs so that they can be installed. So it's natural that you should know more about app signing and how that works. Uh, so this video from Wojtek talks about uh, how to enable uh, signing for your app on Play Console, including uh, options for having Google generate the key for you or uploading a key of your own if you uh, require that instead. Episode two, building your first app bundle. Ben walks you through all the steps of actually creating an app bundle, uh, which you can do either in Android Studio or on the command line, and then uploading it uh, using the Play Console and then using the tools in the Play Console to inspect information about that bundle. Episode three was about configuring your app for Play feature delivery. Uh, you use Android Studio to modulize your application and uh, then uh, also select the modules that you want actually installed at install time of your application or uh, optionally on demand. And uh, Ben also walks through some of the APIs that you can use to request uh, on demand module installation as well. And then the final technical episode is episode four from Wojtek where he talks about testing with bundle tool and play console. Uh, so he shows how to use various tools for uh, uh, making sure that your bundle and your APKs are what you need them to be. And these include both local tools like Bundle Tool, which you can use in the command line and, and related things you can run in Android Studio, as well as using the Play Console for the uploads that you put up there and then the APKs that are generated from those uploads. So there is one more episode to come next week. We are having a Q&A just like we did for the previous navigation series. Uh, I will be sitting down with uh, Wojtek and Ben and uh, Yuri on the development team as well. And we will be answering your questions about app bundles and uh, look forward to talking to them and talking to you next week. If you want to check out anything more about Mad Skills as we continue to roll out content, we've got more technical content, tons of content still to come. Check out the playlist on YouTube. Uh, there's a link in uh, the Medium articles that we're posting that are uh, with associated content. Um, or there's also a landing page where we continue to post all the content for Mad Skills as we go. Android X, lots of stuff gets posted there all the time, every two weeks. Uh, lots of incremental changes to various libraries there, but there were three libraries that just went stable that I wanted to call your attention to in particular. First of all, Constraint Layout 2.0.4. The most important changes there were actually in the 2.0.2 release, which were really important for performance. But go ahead and get 2.0.4 for the bug fixes that have come in since then. So the performance gains came from basically the solver being more intelligent about work that it didn't have to do. So now in many common use cases, it can avoid rerunning the solver or relaying out and remeasuring things uh, along the way, which uh, saves in potentially very expensive operations, especially for situations like deep hierarchies with tons of views that are gone, which they don't need to be measured, but it was doing work anyway. Uh, so that was an important use case to handle, as well as views, very typical that views would choose to be uh, mass constraint, which is when you set your layout width and height to be zero DP. Uh, and it also saves time and effort on those. So these are pretty important. Performance gains are pretty significant in cases that ran across these situations. So definitely grab that one. Startup 1.0.0. So this startup library has been out there in alpha and beta form for a while and now it is finally stable. It turns out that a lot of applications use content provider and more importantly, they use several of them. So when they start up, when they initialize, they would also create several content providers and every single one of those takes a significant amount of time to actually start up and initialize itself. So Startup, uh, the library, actually uses a single content provider, which means you only take that hit once and then it shares out that resource 
uh, among all of the requests that come into the API. So definitely use that for an easier way and a faster way to initialize and launch your application. Tracing 1.0, this isn't a new API per se, but rather we moved something out of core into its own library because it's a very niche use case and it didn't seem to, you don't need to grab all of core in order to just get this tracing capability. This allows you to add easily add uh, tracing calls into your code. So you can instrument your code, which then produces information that can be used in Perfetto, uh, which gives you a good sort of system-wide view of what's going on, or on some older devices, SysTrace. That's what it started out life as. Perfetto is the new version of that thing. And then with these trace commands, you can find out more detailed information about what was going on in your application that can help you debug any performance problems uh, that you are having at that time. Uh, there's also a, a helpful Kotlin extension function that makes it easier um, to have a, a very scoped a block of code uh, where you do the trace begin and trace end around that block of code. So it just makes it easier to create that instrumentation. On the article and video front, it's all about Kotlin. So there were four different topics that came out in the Kotlin area in the last couple of weeks. First, uh, Florina Montanescu uh, posted something, another uh, episode in her Kotlin vocabulary series, this one on data classes. So data classes are a really convenient way for you to basically have structured data where Kotlin provides you a lot of boilerplate stuff that you don't have to uh, worry about. Um, for starters, it gives you automatically a hash code and equals functionality so that you don't have to worry about, well, I added a new data member and then you need to update uh, your functions. And if you don't update them both correctly, then problems can occur. Uh, you're not gonna get the right result. It does all of that automatically for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, it also gives you automatic destructuring of uh, the fields or the properties inside that data class and gives you a copy function as well. Uh, there was also an episode in the Kotlin vocabulary series from Marat Yenner. Uh, so he had already posted uh, an earlier episode on delegates. Uh, the Kotlin feature of delegates. And now this episode talks about the built-in delegates that come with the Kotlin standard library in specific, uh, the lazy, observable, vetoable, and not null. Then Florena posts an article called, Should I Learn Kotlin for Android? And the answer is, of course you should. But for a more detailed and maybe helpful explanation of why that is the answer, as well as other uh, related questions and answers um, that we get from developers all the time, Florina wrote this article going over a lot of uh, important information. There's also a lot of helpful links in there for learning resources for people that do need to actually spin up their development teams on using uh, this language. And uh, finally, Florina posts another article called Fewer Crashes and More Stability with Kotlin um, and discusses, like we talk about this a lot, but this is a bit more detail um, with use cases and examples of why we believe and why we keep saying that uh, Kotlin is actually a more robust language uh, to use and less error prone. Uh, because of features like nullability uh, at the language level, uh, hash codes, um, not being the same as equals uh, I, and more capabilities. And I will leave that to the article to go into in the detail. And then finally, there was a single ADB podcast episode that was posted just this morning as I'm recording this. Uh, Romain and Tora and I talked with Colin White from Instacart. He has an open source library called COIL, which stands for not Kotlin image loading, but coroutine image loading. Uh, and uh, it's, we talked about all kinds of stuff. We talked about uh, that library, but we also talked about Kotlin and coroutines and the choice of those for this library and that functionality. In particular, we talked about performance, we talked about images and image loading. Um, so interesting conversation. Check that out for more information about that library and about Android in general. And uh, finally, as usual, all of the links to everything I talked about are in the article. So check out the Medium article for those. And if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.